All right, strap in because we got another fun one today. Uh, we're back in the historic no banless queue, and today we're taking a look at the no bans Rakdos Storm deck. This is probably the closest deck that I've played on this channel to pure, like actual storm, as is present in a bunch of the other historical formats or eternal formats. And uh, this is probably the closest approximation we can do here in uh, the historic no ban list. So. Let's take a look at the deck. Um, at the end of the day, Storm is trying to kill with things like Tendrils of Agony, Grape Shot, and out of the sideboard, sometimes um, peer into, not peer into the Abyss, uh, Torment of Hailfire. So these are some of our ways that we can win the game. And basically, in order to do any of those things, it's going to either require, in the case of uh, Torment of Hailfire, a lot of mana, or we'll also need to have a bunch of Storm if it's going to be a Tendrils or Grape Shot kill. Almost always it's tendrils, but uh, sometimes we get our opponent low enough that a grape shot can do them in. So what are we taking a look at in this format? Well, we're playing against a lot of decks that play channel. Uh, we'll try to destroy our permanents and then go to a really low life total themselves. So we need to have ways to deal with those decks. And basically how we're trying to do it is we have some small creatures in Ragavan. We have lightning bolts. We have a little bit of grape shot and tendrils as our... Things that can just deal damage incidentally to the opponent. And so sometimes over the course of one of those games, if you can get a few hits early with Ragavan and then finish them off with like one of these other spells, then you might be able to just eke out a victory there. Especially if they play an Ulamog going down to 10. And then after that, you're able to just block the Ulamog's damage for like a turn or two before killing your opponent. Um, but generally the way that we want to win with this deck is by getting a high amount of Storm and then just going over the top for like a 10 jewels for 10, which is possible in this deck. So let's take a look at how we do that. Um, of course, you'll notice that we're pretty high on the one CMC route, and this is because we're trying to turn these into free spells with Bergy God of Storytelling. So if you've seen, I've done a video on this a long time ago. It was Mono Red Storm with a bunch of uh, red cantrips. And basically, Bergy on her three drop side gives you a three three that makes mana every time you cast a spell. It doesn't matter what color the spell was, just that you cast a spell. So basically any one of our one drops immediately becomes free with her on the battlefield uh, and so on with our uh, higher CMC spells. What we want to do with her is basically just get a hand where we can start leveraging these zero and one drops into a turn where we cast something like a galvanic relay for card advantage. And we can set up a turn where we're getting things into the graveyard, where we have a lot of things that we can cast from hand. A lot of them will be cheapened because of Bergy, uh, either cheapened or free. And then we eventually build to a turn where we have a bunch of things that we can cast from hand or from exile, uh, and then we finish with a Tendrils or Grape Shot. We're lucky to have Dark Ritual in here, which helps a lot with casting Tendrils, um, so that is one thing to notice. And also you can get a turn two Bergy out with Dark Ritual. What this all builds to is a turn where either we just kill them with our Storm uh, immediately, or we can get a bunch of mana and wish out a Tendrils from the sideboard or a Grape Shot. And the final way that we can win is by saving up a bunch of mana, getting an Underworld Breach onto the battlefield, and then playing all our 0 and 1 drops from uh, the graveyard, and uh, basically just finish our opponent out that way. If you have Lightning Bolts in the graveyard, that can be a very good way to finish off your opponent, um, but you need to basically be able to turn on Underworld Breach. And how I've made that work is basically by playing towards the Galvanic Relay plus Bergy line first, and then using Underworld Breach as kind of a either a value card or as a finisher late game. This is a pretty different deck. I, I know I've played Storm before and I've always said it whenever I play something like that, but this one truly is different. It really... Uh, it's hard to explain, I guess. I think it's, it's a very set up your laser cannon and then either you shoot your opponent or you don't, which is honestly pretty indicative of what Storm is as an archetype, but this one feels a bit different. You'd have to honestly play it to really see. And I recommend that you do play it. I always include the uh, deck lists in the description in my tapped out links. And if you uh, want to play them, you are always welcome to do so. Um, I guess to cover the other cards in here, um, we can take a look at Demonic Tutor. Uh, I only fit this thing in as a three of, but it's generally good to find anything that we need. Uh, if it's a late game, we find a breach. If it's, uh, if it's a turn where we want to find a relay because we have a bunch of zero drops, then we can do that. Um, sometimes we just need to get the Dark Ritual in order to get our Tendrils ready. Um, you know, there's so much utility out of this, and it's uh, for two mana, it's just a no-brainer auto-include. 
Uh, but we really need to go in pretty deep with these zero and one drops uh, because of Burgi. So we get Chromatic Star out, which is really, really good in this deck. Uh, it basically adds one to Storm. It's essentially free with Burgi on the battlefield, and it is a source of card draw. Uh, sometimes when this is relevant is uh, when you're able to, when you have a longer game going and you can cast Burgi on her opposite side, the Harn Fellhorn of Bounty side. Um, you want to have a bunch of cards in hand so that you can discard them to exile multiple cards and gain a bit of card advantage there with uh, Harnfell. So Chromatic Star is really good to do that, and it also just helps you build Storm in the process, which is cool. Uh, Striker Rich is another similar thing. It basically nets you mana here, uh, which is awesome, and it, it, it nets you mana and it provides Storm, so that's a really good one to have. Ragavan, obviously just a good card to have in general. Um, he'll make mana over the course of the game and give you some card advantage. Plus, he's just a way to deal two damage to your opponent every turn, which is great. Uh, we've covered these two off of the ban list. Um, just generally good cards. Can't really complain there. Uh, Mishra's Bobble off the ban list as well. Great card in this situation. Uh, if you're at a point where you can't combo kill your opponent first, but you're kind of going in for like a small grape shot, you know, this helps with your storm. And then it also sets up a draw for the next turn. So you can kind of use it to leverage into a later good turn. And then, of course, Mox Amber, super good especially in a deck where we're playing a one-drop legendary and a three-drop legendary that we want to hit very often. It's pretty simple with this deck, um, logically speaking. Uh, actually finding the lines is pretty hard, I and mean, I'm definitely struggling with it when I play, but you know that makes it even more rewarding when you actually do get the kill. So with that, I think we'll hop into some games here and see what we can do with uh, Rakdos Storm off of the No Ban List uh, event. Before we hop into some games though, if you've been enjoying the content on the channel, want to see more of this kind of stuff, you can support me by dropping a subscription if you're new, uh, free and easy to do. And if you are a returning subscriber, feel free to uh, drop a like and comment on the video if you did enjoy it. That being said, let's hop into some games and see what we can do. Okay, here we go. This is our round one. So we have a decent start here, honestly. Um, not really in terms of Storm, but we do get a draw out of Demonic Tutor, so once we find one thing, uh, we should be good. Bolt and Ritual are, you know, they're okay. Um, if I use my Demonic Tutor to find a Burgi, then this becomes free. This converts to a bunch of red mana. I'm not turned off by this hand. I think the Ragavan is a pretty big reason why I would like to keep it, though. Uh, let's give this one a try and see what happens. So I will lead off on the cliffs, drop a Ragavan out, and if my opponent doesn't deal with it right away, then we feel really good about this. Uh, opponent definitely on some sort of channel deck here, so this will be a really good explanation of how Lightning Bolt helps us here. Um, we're going to go in first. See what our opponent's got off the top. We could just hit a channel. It's good that they didn't have this Ulamog in hand, though I'm pretty sure they already have a payoff if they took seven. So what do I want to do here? I can Demonic Tutor for a Burgi, cast her next turn, then Bobble becomes a ramp spell. I'd be able to Bolt Ritual Bobble. That would give me essentially a free breach off of the one black, one red. I'd still be sitting on two more black and one red plus the land oh well, i wouldn't have any untapped mana after that point so i'd have about two mana sources it's not a big storm play but i think it just generally it'd be good to tutor for a burgie here uh, especially because i'm not gonna have much time after they uh play their channel here i guess i'll save the bobble here and we will uh try to go this is definitely one of the more um, uncomfortable positions to play from, but this deck can win out of these sort of situations. I've seen it happen. Uh, we find another one of these. That's good. Uh, let's see if this is a counter spell. Actually, you know what? Let's uh, crack in Rathragavan first. Not that it really matters because we won't be able to get around a spell pierce this way. Um, well, getting an opt out of their hand is nice. I'm happy to not see a channel and I'm happy to see them scry to the bottom, so that's great. A double opt, interesting. So I'm actually free to go with a Burgi here. And once our Burgi's down in this deck, we basically just want to wait until our opponent's about to kill us to give us, ooh, now that's good. So what if I tutored again? Um, let's see, so I can tutor for a zero drop. I could tutor for a Galvanic Relay, which honestly is better. Um, 
We'll find Galvanic Relay. I think I could have... I actually, you know what I could have done is I could have Burgied, Bobbled, and then uh, Tutored for Galvanic Relay. Slight mistake, but uh, we'll just set it for next turn. So let's take a look at this. Um, I go Burgie using one treasure. Bobble making red. Use the treasure to double dark ritual. I can bolt for free. I can breach for free and then I can galvanic relay. So I can basically just cast my hand. So that is a good thing to see. Uh, we'll even just make a mana off of uh, Ragavan anyway, so it's fine. As long as my opponent isn't just on some sort of counterspell strategy, then I actually feel kind of good. So this basically just hinges really hard on Bergy resolving, honestly. Um, what if Bergy gets countered? Then I just have one mana. Yeah, Bergy really needs to come down. So if I... I make the treasure here, I'm going to have two mana left over. Bergy gets countered. Yeah, I'm really not able to do anything big there. Does this change anything? Channel's pretty... Channel's kind of huge here, actually. I would be able to cast Bergy. Yeah, you know what? I kind of think I just cast this channel here, honestly. Auto pay. So we've confirmed that our opponent is on channel. Looks like they may also be holding up counter magic too, and they're deciding to counter the channel. Okay, that's fine. Uh, do I Dark Ritual to pay for this? I think I do. Okay, this is fine. I don't care. They're just drawing a spell here, looking for a spell pierce. That's actually very good to know. Um, we will pay the two. That means we get a channel. Okay, so we can pay a... Where do I uh, pay a life for this? Oh, this is interesting. Um, do I not have... There's usually a thing I can click here to pay life, no? Uh, I don't get what happened. Until end of turn, anytime you could activate a mana ability, you may pay a life. I am feeling a little robbed here. No? Interesting. Not sure that that feels right to me. Um, anyway, we have... Mishra's Bobble for free. And then we can just Galvanic Relay there. It's not quite a Bergy. Um, actually, you know what I can do? I can Dark Ritual. I think I can still make it. I think I just did my math wrong. So we go Pay, Pay, Red, Bergy. Nice, that resolves quickly. So now we make Red out of Bobble. Um, we go Chromatic Star using the black, I think. Yep. Uh, we have two plus one mana. Alright, so this is just enough. We can bolt the face. Chromatic Star, we can make a black in case we draw um, a ritual here. Okay, that's basically a ritual as far as I'm concerned. Um, we might as well just sack the bobble. They have a land coming up. We go bolt again, put them to eight. This makes their next channel really bad, which is good. And then we just galvanic relay for ten, set up for next turn. We have five power on the board and ten cards coming here, so I think that we're looking pretty good. Plus we have this breach in hand, which is awesome. Uh, looking at three lands, we hit a lot of things that are not useful here. Bolt is good. I think with seven cards in graveyard, we can just cast two more bolts. So that should be uh, lethal here. And there's even a breach right there as well. All right, so we threaten lethal unless our opponent kills us. Um, I could even cast breach right now, but I'm feeling like that's probably not the move. All right, and looks like they weren't planning on killing me next turn. I could have breached, cast a, so I gotta do some math here. I could have breached, cast the bobble, exiling three cards. Then I could have bolted, putting them to five, exiling the remaining three. Yeah, okay, so I, w I didn't have a kill this turn, but definitely next turn I did. Um, let's just kind of map that out real quick to be sure. So it is have three mana open, play a land, have four mana, cast breach going down to two mana, add one, so it's just three. 
Amber, Amber. So Amber, Amber gives me four mana, tap it for the fifth, cast another Amber for the sixth mana, add a seventh. Um, that's Storm 2, Bolt. I can probably just Legend Rule a Bergy or something even. I don't, I don't know, maybe cast another Reach. Uh, and then we have probably Double Lightning Bolt out of the graveyard from there. Okay, cool. I'm convinced. I think we had him. Awesome game one. Uh, it definitely feels like the early game is a little tough with this deck, and you kind of just need to batten down the hatches and chill. But it's all about getting a big one of those uh, Galvanic Relays out and storming out as hard as you can. Pretty cool deck. I think it does a lot of what Storm is really trying to do, so it's cool that we get to play this on Arena. Uh, kind of a lot of talk for the first round, so let's just hop into round two here and see if we can do it again. Okay, here we go. This is our round two. We've got a Ragavan to start off. That turns on Mox Amber. Then we could just double Bobble and set up. We have a Tendrils in hand, which is okay. It's not great. Uh, opponent going first makes this potentially bad, especially if they move Ragavan. For that reason, I think I'm going to mulligan it. Oh, hey, we got a Ragavan back. Uh, it's a one lander, which, eh, you know, not my favorite, but this is fine. I think we keep this one. And then in terms of what we give back, Demonic Tutor's strong. Lightning Bolt is good in a channel matchup. So I think maybe I just get rid of the Strike It Rich. That does kind of feel awkward. So my first turn is Blood Crypt, Ragavan, Mox Amber. Turn two, actually Mox Amber, Strike It Rich. Turn two, I have Demonic Tutor. So I could get a Lightning Bolt if I needed to. This, I can take this greedily. <clears throat> yeah, this is a like, very strong turn one. Okay, so now I'm kind of regretting not taking the uh, the Lightning Bolt. So I get to Shock here, play Ragavan. Yeah, actually holding that uh, Lightning Bolt up would have been so strong. Uh, here's a Strike It Rich. And then I suppose we might just go for the redraw off of Bobble. This uh, starts to fill the graveyard at least. Okay, so they are just uh, red burn. Interesting. Looks like we got about a turn before that comes down. I think I'm extremely excited to trade Ragavans here. Well, it looks like it's not going to matter. Alright, well now things are going to get kind of hairy. Um... I get to cast a Bergy, and now I don't know if it's six around, which is the problem. Cast Bergy. Auto okay. And now we're forced to just sit here. Looks like they even have a spell, which is tough. Something held priority. Maybe it was just the treasure. Uh, we have something to block Ragavan. I honestly don't think it's going to stick around, though, which is the problem. Oh, this could just be a Helix right now. I think I'm supposed to just block Ragavan. Yeah, I don't think it really matters. If they double spell to kill Bergy, that's okay. So now my next turn is just tutor for a Bergy, I think. Could tutor for a relay, that doesn't really help me either. This one might have just fallen apart due to removal. Uh, they rip one of my tendrils, which is annoying. Uh, Thorolf's Disciple, that is a problem for me, so I'm thinking that I just go Demonic Tutor. Is it really Bergy here? I don't know if it's Bergy. Um, I can get and almost play a Ragavan. Maybe I just get a land. If I get a land, I can wish for something. Don't have another zero drop in there, though. So, okay. A land doesn't exactly help me here. Chromatic Star potentially good. I'm considering getting a Ragavan as well because I can just cast that. Breach. It's not the time for Breach. I almost just want to get another Bergy, but then it's tough if I don't draw a land. Uh, I can just get a Bolt and then Bolt their Ragavan next turn, but that doesn't feel like I really gain much from it. Yeah, this is honestly kind of a tough one. I'm not really sure what I do here. Um... Let's say I get a land. Next turn I can do something like Strike It Rich. We're going to be going basically... I, we might not even get another turn here, actually. Uh, Lightning Bolt does it. Okay, they Legend Rule their Ragavans. Questionable, to be quite honest. They have to get rid of the uh, Dashed one, I think. 
or it's advantageous to them. Uh, they have eight of the cards that is instant death for me right now. At least they didn't rip it off the top with Ragavan. Uh, Dark Ritual, what am I getting here? Can I survive a turn if I try to figure my way into a Tendrils? I think I'm a mana short now. Uh, Dark Ritual, I'll have a total of five mana. I'll need seven to wish into that, so that's not going to work. Uh, Grape Shot. Dark Ritual, wish, Grape Shot, so that will be a total of three damage. I can kill a Swift Sphere and a Ragavan. That means I'm just still dead to Toros Disciple. Okay, so that might just mean we're dead here. Um, I'll play out my best line then, which is just something out of Wish, which is probably just... Um, it's probably just a uh, grape shot, I think. Um, I could tutor, obviously that's not going to help me. I can Torment of Hailfire for zero, which is kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, I'll just do the grape shot here. So grape shot with two copies, I can at least kill two of these creatures. But unfortunately, that will not be enough. Um, so we will go ahead and pass on to our opponent, showing them our best play, basically. Uh, they pretty much had us here, though, so, um, you know, not really much we can do. I think if I can take a look at what I've played so far this turn, obviously we kind of went pretty rickety into a Bergy play, which, uh, you know, that's just going to kind of get you sometimes. Uh, very cool Lightning Bolt Tribal <laughs> out of our opponent. Uh, Thoroughs Disciple, strong card. Lightning Bolt, stronger card. Um, okay, so that was our round two. Let's hop into round three. Here we go. All right, round three. Let's go. We have what I would consider a pretty good hand here, and we do go first, so I think I'm keeping this one. So my plan here is Ragavan, and then turn to Bergy. If we can get a hit or two in with Ragavan, I feel really happy. Is this Thoughtseize? If it's a thought, he's taking my bird, he sucks. Um, okay. Now, we currently now have the option of birdying on the horn side, which is interesting. Uh, let's see if our Ragavan survives combat first. Okay, it does not. Um, this means that we may need to play a bit longer of a game, and thus uh, the horn is better and it won't get bolted out of existence. <clears throat> All right, so here is Ritual Ritual. Uh, and then we go Bergy on Hornside. And now Mishra's Bobble is more advantageous as a source of card advantage if I use it with the Horn. So I will not play it this turn. Um, okay, so now that we have this out, uh, we're looking for another Bergy. Uh, or a Demonic Tutor to find a Bergy, and in the meantime, we are trying to not die, plus uh, getting a bunch of cards and mana stored up. Delver shouldn't kill us immediately. Oh, well, that kind of sucks. Um, and yeah, this is just till end of turn, unfortunately, so I guess we let this happen. So we'll have access to four cards next turn. Seeing that they do play Thought Seasons, I don't feel super happy about um, letting this happen. They take my Breach, it's fine, we weren't going to really use that anyway. So I'll, I'll activate Harnfeld looking for a land drop and something to do. Get rid of the card that they saw. Uh, Mox Amber, Mox Amber is not good. Let's get rid of this. See if we can find something for that Mox Amber to do, and it's just going to be cast a bunch of cards, save up some mana here. Um, and then we want to make sure that we cast both of these because uh, we would rather have our Mox Ambers in the graveyard uh, rather than in exile. We'll set up a card draw here for the next turn as we see that they get a land and we'll have a Dark Ritual to use with Harnfell. Uh, another thought sees. I can... I think I'm fine to just discard a card here. I'd rather discard one card than exile two and potentially just leave them in exile. Dark Ritual is not a big loss for us. And we're only dying one point at a time here, which is good. 
Uh, we will use our land to look for a land and some other things to cast. Uh, we do find one. And the question is, is it going to be Grape Shot? I think it will be Grape Shot. Grape Shot targeting Channeler. They might Counterspell this. That would be a tough Counterspell. Oh, we'd love to just redraw our Grape Shot. That's fine. Does not matter. Um, if we can find a way to kill the DRC before it flips, that's ideal. They have the opportunity to thought seize themselves into discarding the fourth uh, type. That is a thing that could happen. Otherwise, we're doing okay here. Okay, so the question is Grape Shot again or use it for Harnfell? I mean, we ripped a counterspell out of their hand uh, last turn casting Grape Shot. So I say we just go again. Grape Shot for zero. Get big. Uh, and then we pass this turn after that. So they're going to let this Grape Shot resolve? They are. That works for me. Any move that prolongs the game is ideal. And now I immediately feel bad for having done that. Uh, wish I could have held that for Bowmasters. That would have felt a lot better. This Lurus is about to suck. Um, I can Ragavan here and try to rip something off the top of their library. I'd have two mana to cast with it, and actually three because of uh, Mox Amber. We'll dash Ragavan and then maybe just discard him next turn to Harnfell. They go to 14, that makes it a little bit easier to try to kill them. Uh, and then I would have to sack a treasure to make a treasure, exactly, so, alright. Uh, they will have to use a Thought Seize specifically if they want to get Ragavan out of my hand. They keep doing it. Uh, I mean, that's fine. Ragavan is okay in the graveyard, and that's two damage from them. Basically, Ragavan hit. I'm feeling fine about the way this is going. So, we ideally kind of just need to save up a few cards here. Or hit a Underworld Breach at some point. Ooh, Death's Shadow. Okay, I've been seeing a bunch of this uh, around... So, if I go in, I hit him to 10, Death Shadow gets bigger. But then I do get a card off the top with Ragavan. Ragavan also comes back to the hand, which is ideal. They get to cast something out of their graveyard next turn. Uh, it'd be a DRC, but then they would not have um, Delirium anymore. So, I almost kind of want to go in with Ragavan. It plays pretty dangerously with Death Shadow because taking two damage feels very good in their position. I am not really sure what my play should be here. I do get to do Ragavan plus Strike It Rich, saving up a bit more mana. It does take something out of my graveyard. We have 13 cards in graveyard, which is pretty solid, honestly. I'm going to go in with the Dash. If they want to trade for this, I don't feel terrible about it. Oh, they do trade with Ragavan. Sick. Uh, that is good, and then now Mox Amber's turned off, so I cannot do this. There's their Lurus. Oh, I see, and they go for Death Shadow again, just looping that thing. Okay, that's understandable. Uh, Chromatic Star is probably just a good play for me, honestly, because it redraws for a card that I can then get, uh, rid of with Harnfell. I will save this for my next turn. I want to make sure that I can punch through all at once, and so I gotta wait until I'm almost dead. Uh, they're casting this normally. Oh, sorry, that was with dash. So I take five, six, seven. Uh, it's gonna have to be next turn. So we'll do chromatic star on their end step. Resolves. Aw, oh, man, we would have loved to have that Bergy. Darn. So either if I had just used Chromatic Star right away, or if I had um, activated Harnfell last turn, I'd be sitting with the Burgi in hand. Yeah, Burgi's actually not too bad for them in their deck as well. They do play red, and they would be happy to play a lot of these small one-mana creatures. Alright, well this just got a bit harder. What do I do now? I mean, I guess the plan is the same as what I was explaining last turn. Okay, we draw a card. Let's hope it's good. Ooh, Ragavan. Man, that's tough. Uh, notable that Orcish Bowmasters is gonna kill me eventually. 
Uh, now my Ragavan can't go through their Burgi, so I think I'll just have to discard it to Harnfell. We'll start with the land. We hit two more lands, that's not good. Uh, looking like we're dead here, unless I just hit something godly off of this one. Uh, let's see. Well, looks like nothing doing here. We'll strike it rich. Um, we could strike it rich many more times. Um, Mox Amber does not work for Harnfell because that's not a Planeswalker or creature. So we will take the easy way out and uh, <laughs> Lightning Bolt ourselves for the win. Or for the loss, rather. <laughs> Okay, so we had kind of a decent setup there. Opponent had some really timely thought seizes and the yoinking of a burgie that we really wanted to see there. We were getting kind of close. Harnfell didn't quite hit for us, but you know we kind of got to play the long game for a while, and though it didn't work out, I think we played pretty well. Okay, so that was our round three. We got a round four coming up. Okay, round four. I like having a Ragavan. I like that it turns on Mox Amber. Looks like we have a pretty decent turn two Galvanic Relay, especially if our Ragavan can attack. Thought sees, oh, that's gonna hurt. Do they take Relay or Ragavan? If they take Ragavan, we might still be able to function. If they take Relay, Relay is probably the better take. It hurts me the most, I think. Oh, the absolute redraw. We'll uh, show them that we drew exactly the discarded spell. Um, and then we'll save up for trying to make something of our Galvanic Relay play next turn. Double Thought Seas would suck. And they instead give us our turn. We even have Tendrils. Okay, so we'll Dark. We'll, we'll Amber first, then Bobble. Uh, I'm going to actually swing in first with Ragavan. This is bad if they kill me. Oh god, okay. Um, this is okay, we can still cast Galvanic Relay. And actually this does help the storm too, which is fine. So there goes Ragavan. Uh, here is Bobble. Here is Ritual. Here is Galvanic Relay. I could also just hit them for 10. I think I will set up a draw next step. They are going to have a bolt, that sucks. And we are going to Galvanic Relay. Seeing zero drop is good, I do like a Ragavan. Our own bolt is nice, one land is good, we're hoping to not hit two. Okay, so we actually have a pretty decent next turn. It will just have to serve as a setup though. We draw, we get hit, their attack gets bigger. And we can think about using Wish at some point. So playing Ragavan, we'll have three left over. We can do one, two. And if we draw one drop, we have something else to work with. No Storm payoff here though, which sucks. Uh, they can only take Wish. So if I draw exactly Dark Ritual, I have a decent Tendrils chance. I think if I'm them, I'd probably just take the Wish. Um, but you know, it's up to them. They might just take the Tendrils, wondering if I have a kill. If they take my Wish, I think that's the correct move. It's too bad these aren't thought seizes because they'd be hurting them as well. Oh, this is just hand hate dot deck. Okay, sure. Draw land here. We'll play the one from here. And we could dash Ragavan, I guess. Yeah, let's do that. Uh oh, they're gonna have something for me, it looks like. Uh well, even if they kill Ragavan, I can lightning bolt uh before they kill him. Uh, let's bolt their Bowmasters. I'm trying to decide if I want to bolt the Orc token too. I think I just need to do it somehow. I need to deal with the damage somehow. 
And then we'll just set up a bobble, make sure that it goes into our graveyard instead of exile. Alright, so now we are... It's kind of tough until we draw a uh, Underworld Breach. We're pretty close to being able to cast a Burgi with it as well, which is good. Uh, leaving Mox Amber in hand to be discarded wastes a spell out of their hand, and we don't particularly care. Um, yeah, so we want to be able to answer this Lurus somehow, and that Lightning Bolt draw does exactly that. So we will chill here, and while they will get back their Bowmasters, it looks like. Don't play a land, don't play a land. Bobble, that's okay. If they don't play a land, and then they play Lurus, I get to kill their thing before they get to uh, cast Bowmasters out of the grave. Uh, they look at the top of my library. Yeah, they're smart here to not play the Lurus. So that means they have one non-land. Um, we draw enough to get a uh, backside of Bergy set up. Harnfell. It's a DRC. I'm not excited to see that. I'm also not excited to see Dreadhorde Arcanist. That almost needs to be killed more than the uh, more than the DRC. Um. I'm going to kill the Dreadhorde Arcanist, I guess. And I mean, Lurus coming down next turn, recasting any of these things really blows. Um, Demonic Tutor can find Lightning Bolt, I guess. Let's see, if they have a land, they're getting a spell out of the graveyard no matter what. So maybe Demonic Tutor finds... I mean, Demonic Tutor could find Bergy. Um, I could cast Bergy, but then... They have targeted removal for anything on the battlefield. They have Lightning Bolt, so that's bad. That's bad if they get Dreadhorde Arcanist back, which they can do next turn through Lurus if they have a land. Dreadhorde Arcanist won't be able to attack that turn, but then if I don't find a way to kill it before it can attack, then my Bergy play is just done for. So maybe, just maybe, this is go for Underworld Breach, try to control the board. Alright, we'll get one of our Underworld Breaches. And then we'll have to use a considerable amount of our Graveyard here to cast two Lightning Bolts, which sucks. Maybe we try to go Bolt... Maybe we try to just do that into uh, the biggest Galvanic Relay we can, which is probably going to be just for two. If we naturally draw a Bergy, we have a lot of things going for us. If that's not the case, then things are going to kind of suck. So we take five here. We have maybe one or two draw. Oh, that was a Bergy. <laughs> uh, we wanted like exactly that card. Okay, they just cast our Bergy. That's not the end of the world. Oh, we draw our own Bergy. That's huge. Um, okay, so cast Bergy. Uh, make a mana. Doing our Underworld Breach things. Now, what do we want to do? We can go Bolt, we can go Demonic Tutor, find a zero drop. Oh, we can go Demonic Tutor, find our um, filter artifact. So maybe I go Demonic Tutor like this, then I can start doing some zero drop things. Uh, we'll exile the Ragavan since I don't think we're going to cast these. Um, okay, so we find our Chromatic Star. We will cast Chromatic Star using our one mana. Uh, let's play Mox Amber. Uh, we will keep the untapped one. Let's use this to make red. Filter one of them into black, and then we'll want to be making very sure that we cast our mana in the right way. We have a Blood Crypt, which is good. We can go Dark Ritual. Well, do we have enough cards to do that is the question. Um, I think I go Dark Ritual. Get rid of one Mox, one of these, one Bolt. Um, Shock Crypt. 
tendrils for twelve total damage. So we go. <clears throat> we just use ritual. Get rid of the things that we don't need. So we actually don't need the lightning bolts anymore. Get rid of bobble. That's seven copies, and that means we can just tendrils for lethal. One, two, three. All right, I think we just finally got it. That was huge. Tendrils for seven will do it. A total of eight copies. All right, well, this is a another, this is another really cool game where I think that we were just back to the wall up until the turn that we killed our opponent, which is honestly one of the coolest things about this deck. Like it can just pop off from nowhere. I'm really loving it. Um, really strong round four here. I think uh, it's time to just hop into round five and see if we can finish off with one more banger. Here we go. Okay, here we go. This is round five, final one. So if our Ragavan sticks around, this is a decent hand, but we will need to draw into a storm payoff. With my opponent going first, I don't really feel safe keeping my hand. This is an interesting one because I can, on turn two, I can go triple chromatic star, redraw three times, play strike it rich. That's a pretty decent amount of storm. Well, I'll have to get rid of uh, the chromatic uh, star, but. So this is kind of a good one to just sit on, I think. Should have played Blood Crypt. I was thinking about hiding information, but that didn't really matter. Uh, opponent probably just hitting us with a channel this turn. Then assemble the team, probably finding channel or a payoff. I don't know what they have. So I think we kind of just need to sit here. It's unavoid. It's like unpleasant, but we'll have to let them do their big channel move and then just try to squeak over the finish line. Duress. Okay. Well, we have nothing that they really want from us. Probably dark ritual is the best card. We like that strike, it rich stays here. The chromatic stars are just both redraws, which is huge. It is channel. Channel with duress protection. They go Emrakul. All right, so the, I mean, they can just cast our hand, but um, this is actually pretty Emrakul proof, which is cool. I think all they can really do is cast our strike, it rich, and that's it. That's probably their best move, honestly. Okay, so them casting the Chromatic Stars is actually good for me. They're going to sack my treasure without doing anything. The fact that we got one Chromatic Star for free is kind of negating the fact that they're getting rid of my Striker Rich. Sure, I mean, I'm, I'm down for a redraw. Uh, the colors are wrong. If they had made black there, they could have used that uh, Ritual. They can choose to cast Chromatic Sorrow or Bobble here. They'll pass, okay. So we get to Bolt. <clears throat> yeah, so the move here is pretty obvious. We have to draw as many cards as we can and hope that two of them are Lightning Bolt. We can work with... Uh, how many cards in Graveyard? Yeah, so we can work with a Lightning Bolt plus Underworld Breach. We could probably even work with it, one of our storm payoffs. Actually, either one should be able to uh, win the game for us. So for that reason, I'm wondering if I need to play my bobble now. Um, I'll, with Dark Ritual, I'll have a total of six mana next turn. I think it's worth it for that reason to keep Chromatic Storm or Chromatic Star for Storm. Mistress Bubble needs to play, be played now because the draw is um, the draw's delayed. Oh, well, I'm dead to Veil of Summer then. So that means I got a Lightning Bolt now. Oh, that's actually a really unfortunate. We get blown up by Veil of Summer. Crap. So I can put my opponent to five here. And then we can just hope they pa uh, they uh, tap out or something. 
Let's see what our draw is. Bergy's good for mana. There is an alternate line of finding Wish off the top and trying to go for Torment of Hailfire. Drawing Ragavan off the top is now also an option. Okay, we find the Wish. Does this work to get... Um... So, okay, we can find Tendrils out of the sideboard. We can also find Torment of Hailfire. So, four, fourth mana... We'll have a total of six mana with Dark Ritual. That is not enough. What if we Bergy and try to leverage Chromatic Star? That's kind of our only move. So we'll start with Dark Ritual. We'll use that to cast Bergy. Uh, they can do their Veil of Summer Plane now, and that'll force me into Torment of Hailfire. If they Veil, so yeah, I mean, we know that they have the Veil. Here's Bergy. We'll go as far as we can. It's going to have to be a situation where we just make a bunch of mana. So Underworld Breach into recasting Dark Rituals is now maybe our next option. Okay, so we make... we got to maintain this last, last black mana too. Alright, so here's Veil of Summer. We actually have to hit for a really large amount of torments here it has to be one two three at least four at least five so we need to make seven mana let's make should it be black no it should be red because we have the uh we have the one black that we need to start all this off i mean unless we hit demonic tutor strike it rich where we only have access to four mana here, so it's Wish. We'll have two left over. All we can really do is Grape Shot. Oh, but that... That's actually enough, is it not? What's my Storm? Uh, I can't actually see what my Storm is. I'll be able to see it in the sideboard. I think it... Is it three or four? We either win or we don't. I actually don't know. Oh, it's way, it's way high enough. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, well, we kind of stumbled our way into this one. Looks like we have lethal. Our opponent might just go ahead and rope us out here. No, they're gonna click through, they know what's up. Thank you, opponent, for sticking around and finishing out game five with me. All right, so that is a lethal grape shot for seven. Uh, they are not gonna have any counter magic and luckily grape shot gets around Veil of Summer. I was thinking about just in the axis of Tendrils of Agony and Torment of Hailfire, but luckily enough, we play one more card that Veil of Summer can't beat. So once again, we were able to sneak things out here. Uh, this was the angle of dealing with a channel deck and trying to just kill them after they go for their big Emrakul play. And hey, we were able to survive. Uh, it's not often that you can do that against these kind of decks. So all in all, very, very fun sort of build here. I'd recommend giving it a try here in the Historic No Ban List format. And if you want to see more of these kind of videos from me, I've got a couple more in the queue here. Uh, definitely st do stay tuned here by dropping a subscribe uh, for new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, with that being said, thank you for watching. Um, oh, also, uh, if you want to help support me in the algorithm battle, uh, please do so by dropping a like or commenting on the video. Those are actually very, very helpful uh, when it comes to growing on YouTube because those are one of the important metrics that they look at. Uh, with that being said, all the begging out of the way, hope you guys enjoyed this deck. Do check it out. We'll always have the tapped out links in the description, uh, so you can always import that to Arena if you want. Try the deck, tell me how you liked it, and I will see you in the next one.